Hello everybody! Welcome finally to the tech pouch video that I promised you more weeks ago than I like to admit. And when I prepared for this video I could not help to think back and I almost got a little bit sentimental because I had to think back of the time when I was 18 years old and I went for one year to the United States and back then things were totally different. My laptop probably was five kilos so I did not bring it there was no WhatsApp, so just calling my parents and telling them that I made it and that I'm still alive cost me a fortune. And also our internet back then still sounded like... So traveling was definitely totally different back then, but to be honest, I would not want to go back. And nowadays I believe all of us are extremely fortunate, because if we organize it correctly, we can basically work from anywhere in the world that we want to. So in this video, I would like to show you which tech items I bring for work. And it would be very easy to fill up a whole backpack just with tech items, but I personally try to bring the minimum. And please keep in mind that the gear that I will show you today is always a work in progress. And the way I structured this video is that first I'm going to talk about the devices that I bring for work. Then I'm going to talk about chargers and cables, because this topic could get out of hand very quickly, very easily. And then the third one is which kind of accessories and fun things I bring to make my life easier. So my main device is my iPad Pro. It's from 2020 and I use it with the Magic Keyboard and I also have the pencil with it. And I'm very lucky because I can do, I guess, 95% of my work with this thing alone. And now maybe you're wondering what I do with the other 5%. Well, I'm in the lucky situation that I travel with my husband and my husband travels with a MacBook Pro. So if I really run into the situation about once a month that I would need a computer to work with, I can just use his. And the way we set it up is that we have two separate users. So it's very easy for me to just have my files there, my programs there, and it's all totally separated from him. And another thing that's very nice is that I set up that the desktop syncs with the files on my iPad, so it's very easy for me to just transfer data back and forth if I need to. And another thing that unfortunately I have to travel with with my iPad is another case. I got this very thin one and it's very nice because I can just magnetically clip my iPad into here and when I close it, it has this nice flap here to protect my pencil. I like it very much. But the main reason why I use this thing is because my iPad, and I don't know if it's just my iPad or it's because they, this stupid camera is sticking out and it's not flat. When I try to write, there's always this wiggle there. And I use the pencil a lot and I write a lot and I draw for hours and then this wiggle is just driving me crazy. And for this, I have to travel with a second case, unfortunately. So the next thing for a very long time I actually counted it as my luxury item and I really thought so many times about getting rid of it but I could not so now I just consider it an essential for me and I usually keep it in this very nice uh, handmade pouch don't judge my crafting skill it does the trick I needed something this size so I just made one and what I have in here is my iPad mini it's the old version when I don't have it with me, I really miss it. And what I mainly use it for is reading and I use it for note taking. So when I have my iPad Pro on the desk, I keep this next to me and take my notes here. And I also have the other pencil that goes with this one. And when I return to Europe, I think I'm gonna upgrade it to the next model that has the USB-C and can also use the other pencil that I have with my iPad Pro so I don't have to carry two Apple pencils with me anymore. And what I have with it is one of those very small, very thin, very lightweight Logitech key to go, keys to go keyboard. It's not good to write for hours and hours, but if I just go on a weekend trip and I maybe want to get some work done or not, then I just bring my iPad mini and the keyboard and it's a very lightweight solution for me to get some work done when I don't want to bring all my equipment with me. My next device is my beloved iPad mini 12 I think uh, for me it's just the perfect size I don't need a big phone I don't I have my iPad I have my iPad mini for reading so for me this is perfect 
and uh, there's a few features on here that are actually extremely nice for traveling but I will talk about them a little bit later and of course since I'm in the Apple universe one of my main things is my AirPod Pros I used to have the big Bose headphones the noise cancelling ones but I left them at home and just replaced them with this and for me they work more than fine even in airplanes and one feature we really like a lot is that we can share the sound from for example my iPad to my AirPods and my husband's AirPods so whenever we have to have a phone conference together or if we want to watch a movie together we can do that with the headphones as well so now let's move on to chargers and cables and you saw all my devices that I travel with and I'm very happy to announce that I travel with only one plug and this is this one <laughs> This is just the one that came with my iPad Pro. It has a USB-C here. And now you're probably wondering how I'm doing this because one charger and all those devices is not gonna work out, right? And my trick or the way that works for me very well is that I combine this with two power banks. So both of them have a capacity of 10,000 and I upgraded to the models that can charge with USB-C so they charge fairly quickly. And I combine this with two cables so the first cable that I have is this uh, USB-C to USB-C cable that came with my iPad and I paired it with a little small adapter I don't know if you can see this that turns it into a lightning so this is what I usually have plugged in into this charger here and then I have a second cable is uh, this one, very small one on this side it has a USB-C USB-C and USB adapter and on this side it's USB-C and I also added one of those lightning adapters and this one I usually keep with this power bank and the third power bank actually has an integrated lightning cable so now you're probably wondering why I decided to do it like this with the power banks well reason number one on my side of the bed there is never a plug. I don't know why, I don't know who plans hotel rooms, but plugs are just never there where I need them. They're not next to my bed, they're not next to the desk. And we had it more often than not that the only available plug was in the bathroom next to the sink. With the power banks I can just charge my all my devices, even the iPad Pro, anywhere I want. And reason number two is that I personally feel much more comfortable to leave my power bank in the hotel room charging when I go out. But I, for example, would never leave my iPad Pro charging when I'm not there for hours. Then I much more prefer to have it in the safe. And I personally like traveling with two power banks because it just makes everything a little bit more flexible. And I can leave one in my tech pouch and one in my bag when we're traveling or one is charging while the other one charges my little devices, so it's very practical. So with that combination of charger, power bank and cables, I can comfortably charge all my things and depending on my destination, I bring a travel adapter, but right now it's not necessary, so I don't have it with me. <laughs> so now let's talk about accessories. And I wanna start with one of my favorite topics and if you already watched a few of my videos, you may already know that, and that's pouches. And what I started with on this trip was this pouch here. It's from a company called Innatech, so it's not the original from Peak Design, but it's basically the same pouch. And I really liked it when I was still having an apartment and a desk, because I would just leave it open like this on my desk and I would have all my things in there and everything was very well organized. But to travel with, at some point, I just realized this thing is way too bulky. And at some point, what's even worse, I realized that I can fit all my things into a bag of this size. And it actually closes easier than this one. Because the problem that I ran into here was that the way it's organized, everything is next to each other and then it's hard to close on some parts while other parts are still completely empty. So during my trip, I moved into this pouch and originally I used to transport my socks and underwear in here but I already discarded most of them now so they now live in a small uh, plastic bag inside my packing cube and this is now my tech pouch so let's have a look what's inside so the first thing is I have this little tripod it's from Joby I think 
Yes, show me. <laughs> and you can actually extend it. And it has a little ball up here. It's a little bit fiddly to actually lock it, all the elements. So I could use it as a selfie stick if I would want to, which I actually never use it. But I can also just fold these things out and use it as a tripod. And I pair it usually with a little um, phone holder. Then, <laughs> you're gonna think I'm stupid. <laughs> I really love traveling. <laughs> I really love traveling with my little USB ventilator. It's actually extremely practical because I can also plug it into my power bank and then it gives a fantastic breeze. <laughs> and this is very, very useful in hot countries. When you're working on the desk, you get a little nice breeze. And I also, I really hate it when I get sweaty fingers and I have to draw with the Apple pencil and the, the hand does not glide properly over the iPad anymore and all those things so this comes in really handy or I use it in the hotel room at night to give more often than not you get just the right amount of breeze with this thing to be able to fall asleep on a hot night or I also point it at my clothes to dry them faster in the breeze or the most embarrassing thing <laughs> when I sit like this <laughs> in a tour bus because they don't have air condition but it works don't judge it before you don't try it actually my husband always made fun of me about this thing i already own it since i don't know eight years or so <laughs> but now he also bought one and he also loves it so and actually i could use it right now because here in brazil it's really really hot and i cannot use the air condition because you hear it on the video so this is actually very nice maybe i paused the video here and talking about the sweaty hands and how much I dislike them, I also travel with a glove. I have this thing since, I don't know, 20 years when I was still painting on the vacuum tablets. And it just helps your hand to glide easier over the surface. So the next thing in here is my magic mouse. I thought I need one. I used it once, I think, in the last half year. So on my next trip, it's not going to join me anymore. And the next candidate that's also not gonna come with me the next time is this Huawei SIM card router. I really don't use it anymore since I have my iPhone. What I use is eSIMs. You can only use one physical SIM and one eSIM at a time, but that does not mean you cannot store more than one eSIM and activate them as you need. So let me show you what I mean by this. Here in cellular plans you can see that I have one, two, three SIM cards set up. The first one is the Brazil. It's a physical SIM card. Then I have my Austrian phone contract, which is an eSIM. And I have a global eSIM where I use an international prepaid SIM card, which I can, well, wherever I am in the world, I can just activate it and for a few cents I have internet. But if you want to know more about what I use, I already did a separate video about how I stay connected when traveling. The problem I often had is that I needed my Austrian phone number because it's associated to, I don't know, bank transfers or logins somewhere. And then I always had to change SIM cards and activate it and internet would immediately activate and cost me a lot. But now it's very practical, but I just go to my Austrian eSIM and I turn on this line. And then it turns it on and then I go to default voice line and I switch to Austrian SIM. So my data is still on my Brazilian SIM card, but my Austrian number is now active and I am able to achieve the messages that I need to at no cost at all. And once I'm done, I just go ahead and deactivate this thing again. And also with the international SIM card, whenever I'm in a new country, I just activate it. So I like it very much that I have all these different options here available with just one tap away. So another thing I have in here is a cloth to clean screens and glasses. Then I have here is just some spare headphones with one of those adapters for airplanes. Then I also have a SanDisk SSD. It's with one terabyte and it plugs directly into my iPad Pro. So sometimes I use it to back up a few things. Then another thing I have in here is a Moleskine Krahir notebook and 
my pen of choice. As a left-handed person, I'm always struggling to find a good pen. And my current favorite is the Pentel Ener Gel. Uh, I don't like, for example, to take my tech with me to the beach, but sometimes I just like to sit on the beach and brainstorm new ideas or articles or whatever it is. And when I return, it's a very nice feature nowadays with the iPhone. You just take a picture of what you wrote. And if I write nicely enough, it will automatically recognize the text and I can copy it into my note-taking app. And then here, there is a small little zipper with a little bag <laughs> where I just keep a few little things, you know, like spare tips for the Apple pencils. Uh, one thing that's probably worth mentioning is I don't like those big hubs. So nowadays many people travel with those big hubs for USB and USB-C and whatever. I don't need that. I have one small adapter from Anka, that's USB-C and regular USB on one side, that works for me. And here I have a second adapter also from Anka, that's just an SD card reader. So with those two small things, I am able to get all the data input into my iPad computer, whatever I need. Here I have a fantastic little uh, highlighter, never use it. See, even me, I'm still carrying around things I don't use all the time. So <laughs> small USB sticks, 128 gigabytes. Sometimes you just need to back up something small or when I go to a copy shop and I want something printed out, it's nicer to have one of those things. Adapters for the SD cards. And I also keep one of those SD cards which has all my basic or important information on it. Like I have my passport copy and things like this, visa papers stored on an SD card like this and I keep it in my little wallet. So. Just a side note, very practical. Last few things. <laughs> I have a JBL speaker. And now you're again wondering why I count this as office tech or work tech. But actually we bought this a few months ago when we were in an Airbnb and the family next door, they just got a little puppy and the little puppy was crying all day when the family was not home. So we were like, Aah! And after three days of when we were walking through the city, we just saw this thing and we bought it. And sometimes it's just very nice to have some background music and yeah, we like it very much. And I also have the um, Alexa app set up on my phone. So when I pair it with this thing, it's almost like using an Alexa at home. Another thing I'm traveling with is the Sony CV-1, but I cannot show it to you right now because I'm filming. <laughs> we also have a tripod that the camera is on. And another thing we travel with are those Rode microphones. They're very nice because they're actually, they're one receiver that you plug into your camera, your phone, whatever, I have both adapters. And then there is uh, two microphones and both of them record into the same thing. So they can be in totally different rooms. And we actually purchased this thing for our wedding because we made a live streaming because thanks to the current world situation and our families being spread out all over the globe, we were not everybody was able to attend basically. And we wanted to make a live streaming and we wanted to have nice sound so they could hear the lady who did the wedding, they could hear us. So we purchased this thing. So one we laid with the lady, one was lying with us and the sound was quite crisp. And nowadays we just use this very much for phone conferences and we also purchase these little magnets that just go like this and with that you can just magnetically attach those things onto your t-shirt. So that's all the tech gear I bring. I hope you were able to get a few ideas that you could also maybe use for the future. If you have some ideas for me, I'm always more than happy to hear. And if you want to see more of my videos about minimal traveling, I have a playlist and I will link it somewhere right here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!